Marley was dead to begin with. This must be distinctly understood, or nothing wonderful can come of the story I am going to relate. Every year we sit down to watch The Muppet Christmas Carol, and almost every year I watch that film and go, I want a dressing gown like that. This year I've not quite managed that feat, and I also didn't manage to make it in time for Christmas. But on this channel, Christmas lasts for 12 days and, after all, but what's a couple of days between friends? Come along with me and I'll show you how I made a snuggly dressing gown to keep the winter chill out as we embark on various adventures at the second spookiest time of the year. Hilariously, I wanted this to be a quick project, so I started with a second-hand kimono, thinking that having the main body assembled would save me some time. I removed the sleeves and also unpicked the collar. After trying it on, I also took about 15 centimeters off the bottom of the hem. This makes it near enough ankle length, nearly touching the floor on me when it's finished. I unpicked the sleeves to use as new sleeves in a different orientation. After a bit of playing around, I decided to use the existing deep armholes of the kimono and make my sleeves quite large. So I cut each sleeve piece in half along the fold and turned them sideways. The same was done for the lining. Each sleeve had a facing inside the wrist, which I decided I wanted to reuse in the final garment. So I attached it to the sleeve lining with tiny whip stitches. Because these facings were a fixed size, I also made the sleeve smaller at the wrist edge, tapering it into the full width towards the body. I think this gave the final sleeves a very elegant shape. Having pressed out the front of the kimono, I then added facings in cotton velvet. Hang on, I've got a tool for this. I knew I wouldn't be able to create a proper lapel because the shape of the kimono was just too boxy, but I wanted a suggestion of it, and also to have something soft and fuzzy towards my neck. I also made a collar for the back, which I sewed in by hand, and then immediately unpicked because it was much too small and looked horribly wrong. I used the failed collar as a template to create a new, bigger, better collar. With the collar and facings inserted, then the lining was sewn in all around the front of the kimono by hand. I sewed in the sleeves and then unpicked the sleeve I'd sewn in upside down, reset it, having already sewn the lining and sleeve outer together at the cuff, and then sewn up the sleeve seam in one continuous run. I fitted the sleeve lining underneath the lining of the body and pinned it into place and then that had to be hand sewed. I fully unpicked the collar of the kimono, sewed it back together into one long tube and turned it the right way out. This will now be my waist tie for the dressing gown. It probably didn't need to be as long as it is, but I'm extra. Finally, the original kimono had a line of piping sewn into the hem, which I liked the look of, so I decided to reuse it on the final hem. I tacked it into place by hand and then turned it under and pressed, so that the piping cord sits at the very bottom of the hem. The fabric outer was turned up to match and also pressed into place. At which point all that remained was several hours of hand sewing. It may have taken me several days longer than originally planned, but I am quite pleased with my dressing gown and I'm looking forward to wearing it an awful lot over this winter and many winters to come.
Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh and little heeded them, for he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened on this globe for good at which some people did not have their fill of laughter in the outset. And knowing that such as these things would be blind anyway, he thought it quite well that they should wrinkle up their eyes and grins, as have the malady in less attractive forms. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. He had no further intercourse with spirits, but lived upon the total abstinence principle ever afterwards. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone.